The following program is sponsored by the Hope Team, friends and partners of Keith Nix Ministries. Hello and welcome to The Lift. I'm Keith Nix and I'm delighted that you're with us this week. You know, last week we kicked off a message. I recently preached at The Lift Church in Sevierville. We'd love to have you come visit us. And in the message, something I'm really excited about because I believe it's a word of God for right now. So we wanted to rush this out to television because I believe it's, a, it's an on time word. It is time, maybe past time, for the church, the ecclesia, to stand up and sit down. Stand up, stand up, shake ourselves from the dusty living that's been going on and sit down in the seat of authority that Jesus has made available to us. You know, when we talk about the church, we have all these ideas of what the church is. Sadly, most often we think of the church as a building because in somewhere around AD 350, that's what happened when in Constant, Constantinople and in Constantine's role, uh, rule, they, they built the first building that they called a church. And so we inherited all of that. And so we think of the church as a building, but it's not a building. It was never a building. Never will it be a building. The church are the people of Christ, the body of Christ, the called out ones. What's amazing is that Jesus, and you'll hear this in the message, but, but it's important principle. You really need to hear it more than once. Jesus called the church. He said, uh, Matthew 16, I will build my church. And he used not the word for synagogue. He didn't use a, a word for religious gathering. He used a governmental word. And that's crucial and that's key. And we're going to learn more about it today. So stay with me for this message. I'm coming back in just a little while to pray with you. And let's do it. Let's stand up, shake ourselves from the dust, and sit down in the seat of authority. Remember the word that is used for church. When Jesus says in verse 18, I will build my church, he did not use the word synagogue. He did not use a word for a religious gathering. He reached into the political arena, the governmental arena, and he used a secular word, ecclesia or ecclesia. He said, I will build my ecclesia. I... Mm. Now listen, I know intellectually we know this, but, but we got to understand some, somewhere maybe around 350 A.D. when Constantine, in the period when Constantine made Christianity the official religion of Rome. On the surface, that sounds awesome. But if you look back in history, it wasn't a good move. I don't have time to go into that. But when he made Christianity the official religion of Rome, somewhere around 350 A.D., when the first building, edifice, was built, that would be refer that was referred to then and began a tradition for us that we're still dealing with today. When the building was built, it was called the church. And so still today, when we talk about church, far too often we think building. You can thank Constantine for that. When we think church, we still tend to think building. Even those of us who know better intellectually, but we're still dealing with all of this tradition. So we talk church, we think building. But the church was never a building. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm going to build my 
ecclesia, my ecclesia. And the ecclesia were, was a reference to not a building. It wasn't a reference to the Congress, to the Hall of Congress. It was a reference to men and women who were called out from the general citizenry and they were called out as representatives and they gathered together. So church has something to do with gathering. Come on, Hallelujah. just because it's not a reference to a building doesn't mean that you can just do church by yourself in your house. Come on, I want you to hear me right now. I hear some people say, well, I am the church, so I don't go to, I don't need to gather. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He held me back. Hallelujah. But yeah, no, no. It, it's a reference to the gathering of called out individuals. Remember who were called out to do what? They were called out to set the culture for the region in which they lived. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. So Jesus said, I'm going to build my church, my ecclesia, my called out ones. I'm going to separate people. I'm going to call you to my name. And you're going to come together in the gathering. And together, not individually, but together, you're going to begin to set culture for the air. What do I mean by set culture? They were given the responsibility of deciding what would be allowed and what would not be allowed in the place where they lived now listen the pro you see you see how the devil works if he got when he got people to think the church was a building and when he got people to, to forget that the church is people that gather together then then we seem to totally forgotten what Jesus said our calling is in fact, I thank God I'm going to heaven. I'm preaching a funeral tomorrow in Asheville, and I'm going to talk a little bit about why is heaven so good. So I thank God for heaven. I, think, I believe in it, and I praise God that there is a glorious day that is coming for all of us. But listen to me. I don't believe our goal should be heaven. Oh, it's going to get quiet in here again. Jesus didn't just save you to get you to heaven. That's what's wrong with American Christians. We got people that just prayed a prayer so they could get to heaven one day. But he didn't just die on the cross so we could get to heaven one day. He died on the cross to redeem us and to restore what Adam had lost. Hmm. And so he called us to be the ecclesia. Everybody say, I'm part of the called out ones. I've been invited, I've been summoned to come out separated for the purpose of God. To do what? To make decisions about what will be and will not be allowed in our region. You see why the devil's afraid of the church? Because you've been given, as part of the church, we've been given authority. And yet we haven't been sitting in our proper seat. We've been sitting in the dust. We've been sitting in the dust as beggars, as paupers. We've been sitting in the dust just waiting like, like, alcohol, like an old alcoholic in an old western town. Just waiting for somebody to flip you a, a little bit of money. So even if they flip it in the spittoon, you'll dig down in through all the spit to get that money. So you can go and get your temporary fix. And there are too many Christians that have been living that way. Sitting in the dust, waiting for the world to throw us a little this or a little that. Waiting for the government to do this. This or to do uh, uh, waiting, waiting until we can get a little bit of, uh, of, of notice, living for a like or a love on social media. But God's saying, shake yourself from the dust, get up out of that begging place, out of that dusty existence, and then stand up. And when you stand up, you'll sit down in the right seat. Come on, in the right seat. And so the devil's afraid. Why did he, why didn't 2020, what's he trying to do? He's trying 2020, still into 2021. He's trying to lay a, a groundwork. Yeah. What does he really want to do? Stop the gathering of believers. Yeah. He wants to stop our gathering. And listen, I'm thankful for modern technology. We stream our services here. I'm thankful for the people that it reaches. But please hear me. The glory of the Lord is not going to be carried by technology. 
I'm going to say it again. Technology is an ox cart, and it can never carry the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Ark of the Covenant has to be carried on the shoulders of the priesthood. And if you're a New Testament born again, Holy Ghost filled believer, you are in the priesthood of God. And God wants the church made up of individuals, but coming together collectively to carry his glory to our generation. Oh, hallelujah. So it's about far more. Listen, it's about far more than the gathering, but it always includes the gathering. Mm. And we're called to set culture. Look with me, Matthew 16. You know these verses. I preached through some of them, but let's read it real quick. Let's start in verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And he uses two different words. You are Petros, and on this Petra I will build my church. So Peter is not the rock. Jesus wasn't saying he's going to build his church on a succession of men. You are Peter, but upon this rock I will build my church, and read it aloud with me, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail, be victorious against it. Man, we can shout right there. If you're part of the ecclesia, then would you just take a, 15 seconds and praise God that none of the strategies of hell will be victorious against you corporately and individually. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 19 and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. How many believe that in heaven, everything's open? You think you get to heaven, you're going to need, you're going to be handed a set of keys to get into the place that, that is yours? No. In, in the heavenlies, it's open. So why do we need the keys of the kingdom of heaven? Not for heaven, for earth. Because things are locked up here. They're not locked up in heaven. They're locked up here. So these keys are not for there. I'm going to say it this way. These keys are not for then and there. These keys are for here and now. Mm. He said, I'm going to give you the keys. How many, how many believe God's going to give you at least one key? You've got, you've got it. He said, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, together, we have all the keys. Watch this. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, when did he say that? You know all this, but you got to be reminded. When did he say these words about binding and loosing? He said it right in the same breath as I will build my ecclesia. And so in verse 19, he's telling us what the role of the ecclesia is in each community. What's the role? To bind and to loose. To determine what is allowed and what is not allowed. Hallelujah. To stand up in the spirit, sit down in the seat of authority with Christ who has overcome and to make decisions about what will come to Sevier County and what will not come to Sevier County. Hallelujah. What will come into your house and what will not come into your house. Glory to the name of Jesus. Ah, I know I'm stretching somebody right now. But see, that's in context. That's what the church, this is the purpose of the church. 
Let me read it to you from the Passion Translation. Jesus replied to Peter, you are favored and privileged, Simeon, son of Jonah, for you didn't discover this on your own, but my Father in heaven has supernaturally revealed it to you. Verse 18, I give you the name Peter, a stone, and this truth of who I am will be the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church, my church, my legislative assembly, and the power of death. Now, you catch that? That's what the ecclesia is, a legislative assembly. And the power of death will not be able to overcome it. I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth. Now watch, this picks up what the Greek text says. To forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven. And to release on earth that which is released in heaven. You see, we're not just going to make up what we can bind and what we can lose. That's not it. It's the church walking in alignment with the, the head of the church, and we take authority and we declare, as it is in heaven, so it will be in the earth. That means some things that are not in heaven. If it's forbidden in heaven, somebody lift up your hand and say, it's forbidden in my house. Glory, come on. If it's forbidden in heaven, somebody say it again. It's forbidden in my house. If it's forbidden in heaven, it's forbidden in this gathering. If it's forbidden in heaven, it's going to be forbidden on the streets of Sevierville and Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. Oh, hallelujah. If it's loose in heaven, if it's permitted in heaven, somebody lift your hand and say, it's going to be permitted in my house. Hey, hey, hey. If it's permitted in heaven, somebody shout with me and say, it's permitted right here, right here in this place. One more time, if it's permitted in heaven, somebody lift your hand and say it's permitted on the streets of Sevierville, on the streets of Seymour, on the, hallelujah, oh, every, you just name places around, Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg, come on, Pittman Center, if it's, for, if it's permitted in heaven, glory to God, and, and, then, and then, of course, it starts with us as the individual. If it's forbidden in heaven, it's forbidden in this part of earth. If it's permitted in heaven, it's permitted in this part of earth. Glory to God. Listen to it from the Weiss translation. And answering, Jesus said to him, Spiritually prosperous are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Moreover, as for myself, I also am saying to you, you are rock, Petros masculine and gender, a detached but large fragment of rock. And upon this massive rock, Petra, feminine and gender, feminine demonstrative pronoun that cannot go back to masculine. Petra, a rocky peak, a massive rock. Upon this Petra, I will build my church. And the counsels of the unseen world shall not overpower it. I'm going to read that again. The counsels of the unseen world shall not overpower the church that Jesus is building. How, now, if you're in that church, if you're in this church, you ought to go ahead and give him praise because you, you can know this individually. If it's happening corporately, then thank God it's got to happen individually. The counsels of the unseen world cannot overpower us. I shall give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, forbid to be done, shall have been already bound, forbidden to be done in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, permit to be done, shall have already been loosed in heaven permitted to be done glory to god hallelujah and see this is what we're called to we're called to forbidding and permitting forbidding and permitting but we can't live that we haven't been living that way we've been living seeing what 
is going to happen. Come on, we're, we're stepping out a little. We've been living reactive, waiting to see what's going to happen, and then we react. Why? Why have we been living that way? Because we've been living in the dust. We've been sitting in a low place when the seat that he has given us is in a high place. Turn with me to Ephesians 2. Can I preach just a few more moments? Look with me at Ephesians 2. Mm -mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at Ephesians 2. It says, verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. How many can say hallelujah? hallelujah. And raised us up together. Somebody say it with me. I've been saved and raised up. And made to sit together. Where? In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So where is the seat I'm to stand up and sit down? Where's the seat I'm to sit in? In the heavenly places. Yeah. How many understand that if I am seated in the heavenly places, I no longer have to live reacting to what shows up on Monday? Because I'm in a heavenly place, which means I have a sight a perspective. Hallelujah. I'm not down in the low place anymore. If you choose to live dusty, dirty lives, just feeding the flesh, just always caught up, got to gotta binge this program and binge that program and listening to this guy and listening to that. If you, if you choose to live that way, you're living in the dust and you're going to always be reacting to whatever is coming at you. But if you'll, if you'll get up and get back in the place he set you, he sets you, you say, but if he set me, then I'm still there. Yeah, but here's the thing. The problem, Bishop Tony used to say it all the time, the problem with new creations, how many believe 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The problem is we keep finding new creations living at the old address. Because you have the power of choice, we keep, we keep getting out of our God-given seat and sitting back down in that place where the enemy wants to keep us, where the world wants to keep us. And so the church has just been as filled with fear as anybody else in society. The church gets as upset and, and gets as ugly as anybody else in society. The church justifies all her ugliness just like everybody else in society. Come on, and go down here reacting in the dust. But God says, shake yourself from that dust. Stand up. Stand up for the kingdom that you're now part of. And then sit yourself down in the seat that I put you in. And when you sit in the seat of heaven, somebody lift your hand again and say, my perspective changes. And I'm not, hallelujah. And then, and then what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit becomes true for us. He will show you things to come. So the church is not just reacting to what is happening. The church is ahead. There's a, hear me, there's a remnant. There's the ecclesia. And I believe God's called you to be part of it. We're not going to be playing catch up in these next few years. But by the power of the spirit of prophecy, we're going to, we're stepping ahead. I hope you're catching this. Isn't it time that we Christians, I'm just talking to Christians right now, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, it's time that we stop living reactionary and we start living proactively so that we're ahead of the, of the thing rather than, than behind the thing. You know, the promise in Deuteronomy 28, God said, I will make you the head and not the tail. So God wants us to live uh, above and not beneath. And when we sit in the seat of authority, the Bible says in Ephesians that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's our position. And it's time now for our reality to line up with the position 
that he has granted us. And when we sit in that heavenly seat, our perspective is different and we see things further out and the Holy Spirit shows us things to come and we're not living trying to catch up always, but we're able to live preparing for the perilous times that are upon the earth and that are still coming upon the earth. I, I want to pray with you right now. Hope you caught this message. Look, I, I'd encourage you to, uh, the information will be up where you can easily see it, but I'd encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our Roku channel, uh, download our ministry app, uh, send us, when, when you go to keithnicks.org, sign up for our newsletters. Uh, let's get connected. Come visit us here at the Lift Church. We'd, we'd love to get to shake hands with you and meet you. And if you're listening to me right now and you're not, you're not walking in true fellowship with Christ, now's the time to, to come home. It's time to repent. Repent means to change your thinking. It's time to say, I'm coming back to the God of the Bible. I'm coming back. Somebody listen to me right now. You need to come home to your upbringing. You were raised to walk with the Lord and you've gone astray. But right now, right now, lift your voice and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way I've been living. Father, I ask you to forgive me in Jesus name. And I pray that you will free me right now and fill me with your Holy Spirit and let me live the life of victory you've called me to. And if you'll pray that he's going to answer it. The information's on the screen, how you can contact us. We'd love, we'd love to be able to stand with you in prayer. We'd love to see you here at the lift. Remember until next week, Jesus is Lord. Let him be the Lord of your life.